Okay. Well, welcome everyone to our most recent, our newest uh, in the series of Clean Beauty Masterclasses. And I'm so excited about tonight. It's a topic very near and dear to my heart. And I'm with the master himself, Sean Town. Uh, but this evening we will be uh, spending together discussing all things sort of blush, contour, highlight, learning about Jane Iredale. Um, and without further ado, I, Sean, I would love for you to, to uh, talk about your background a little bit and tell us why, why you love blush. Sure. I've uh, thank you so much, Katie. It's absolutely always a joy to work with you. Um, <clears throat> so I've been a makeup artist for 33 years. I started doing makeup in Ever? 1988 in yep. San Antonio, Texas. That's where I, I graduated <laughs> from high school with a cosmetology license back in 88. And I started doing makeup for cosmetology for cosmetics lines and department stores back then they had Foley's um, uh, and Joskies, and they also had, uh, there was a Lord and Taylor store in San Antonio as well. Okay. And I free, I freelanced for different brands. Uh, back then it was for a brand called Ultima two. Nobody Ooh. remembers it probably, but it was sold in a cosmetics bay that had Charles of the Ritz, Jermaine Montaigne, Alexander de Markov, a lot of brands that they don't even make anymore. Yes. And, uh, and I, and then I'm, I, I worked for Glamour Shots. Do y'all, do you remember Glamour Shots? I remember right? Glamour Shots. We did that when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I worked for them. It was a good, good practice because it got my makeup yeah. time down. And then I moved to Los Angeles in the nineties mm -hmm. to build my portfolio as a makeup artist. And I did what a lot of people did. I starved. <laughs> and then yep. after I'd been there for about <laughs> six months, I started to get work first assisting other makeup artists. And then I got to do some really cool key makeup artist jobs and do some celebrities and some mm -hmm. um, magazines and television and all kinds of fun stuff. I've also worked in New York doing runway shows for brands like uh, Oscar de la Renta, mm -hmm. Tracy Reese, Bagley Mishka. And uh, my work has been in some major publications, mainly though from Jane Iredale. You know, it's weird because for years I wanted to get my work into um, you know, in style magazine or Vogue magazine. And I, and I couldn't. And then after working for Jane Iredell and doing makeup for our images, mm -hmm. the images from our advertising ended up in those magazines. So I was really excited about that. Yeah. Love that. Well, thank you so much. I, I always love to hear more uh, about people's backgrounds and I'm just sort of a sponge. So I will be answering questions and, and shouting them out to Sean, but sometimes I just get curious about things as, as we roll along. Uh, but sort of on that note, if you did submit a question ahead of time, we will be getting to that. If we won't get to it, we will. Um, you can shoot us an email or a direct message on social and we'll get to you. Uh, I'm just checking if there was anything else in the chat before we jump in. Uh, I think we got a question about our hydration spray. Do you spray after all the makeup is done or only after the foundation? Both. I spray after I do the foundation because what it does is it sets the foundation in place. And then when I'm doing the blush or the bronzer or any other color on top, it doesn't take off the makeup that I've just put on. Perfect. Once you spritz a layer, that layer is set and it makes it so that it doesn't move when you put other things on top of it. Um, and that gives you the ability also to build your coverage and make it more intense. So for example, if she had hyperpigmentation or dark spots on her face, I could go in and do a layer of pure press base, mm. spritz it with hydration spray, and then go and put another layer on top of it and keep doing it until I cover it completely. Perfect. Yeah. And I just like to spray really all day long. <laughs> yeah. I always have to have one next to me. It's like, it's like a little self-soothing moment. Um, let's see. So one other question, is this being recorded? Yes, we will be recording this and it will be on our YouTube channel forevermore um, for uh, you to view later. And we just got one question in about glow time stick. So stay tuned. We'll be answering that in a little bit. Um, but Sean, what would you like to start with tonight? Or just kind of, do you want to talk about blush? How, how should we proceed? So, well, uh, just to, just to preface everything, I've and so you all know I've prepped, um, I've prepped Taylor's skin with, uh, just because we're now recording, so I want everybody who's who's watching the recording to know this. I prepped her with Smooth Affair Illuminating Glow, which is our newest primer that has a little bit of mica in it that gives luminosity. But then I went over it with our Beyond Matte Liquid Foundation. Now, Beyond Matte is kind of a modern take on matte because it has. Uh, the word matte in it, but when you put it on, it actually goes on quite luminous. The key is, is that when you wear it, it works with your sebaceous glands to lower oil production. So your skin gets gradually more matte as you wear it. So it keeps you from getting too shiny, but it doesn't take away your natural glow. So it's a modern take on matte. Then I dusted over with Pure Press Base in Cognac and we spritzed with Lemongrass Love. 
so she's she I also did a little bit of eyes on her. She has some solar flare um, eyeshadow kit on her so eyes. Cute. And then a little bit of Forever Peach and some Cocoa Pencil on the lips just to kind of define her features. But I didn't want to overdo it because we really want it to be all about her cheeks tonight. Yes, we do. So I thought, I thought it might be fun to start with one of the Great Shape Highlighting Contour Kits. Usually, if I'm going to contour, I typically do that before I do any kind of blush or bronzer. I start with concealing usually mm -hmm. just to brighten the under eye. And then I will go in with a bronzer color that's slightly deeper than the skin. Now, this is the deep contour kit. And you can see that it has three colors in it. And you have the cool kit. I, I can see that. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Deep has a deeper color contour. It has some of our sunset blush, which is a fresh, bright, intense blush color. And it also has a highlighter color that has a good amount of luminosity there. Now, there's a kind of a misconception that people have that when you contour, that you have to make sharp lines of color and mm -hmm. then blend them up. And I guess that's okay when you're doing stage makeup work or right. you're gonna be performing or something like that. But right. for day-to-day -day contouring, my recommendation is to use a little bit fluffier of a blush, brush. This is our chisel powder brush. It's one of my favorite brushes to use for contouring because rather than making hard, you know, sharp lines on the face that look garish and people can knock it off across the room when you go outside. Instead, I like to do soft blended lines and that's what this does. So I get the deepest color from the contour kit and hold on, let me put on my glasses because I'm blind as a bat. And then we're gonna go under her cheekbones. And if you turn her to the right here, you can see kind of the shadow directly under where her natural cheekbone is elevated there. Remember that dark recesses or pushes back, light elevates or pushes forward. So when we're putting this dark color under the cheekbone, we're, we're accentuating the natural hollow that she has beneath the bone. If you feel here, you can feel the bone on her cheek. So I'm going underneath it. I'm also gonna take that contouring along the underside of her jawline here chiseling away any little bit of baby face and making it look more refined. I'll take it all the way up behind her ear even, and that way there's not a line of demarcation. Uh, oh I see God. some people that'll, I'm sorry? I I, um, I skipped ahead in my questions because I put a little bit too much on, I got excited. So <laughs> what would you suggest? I just went right in uh, and I have a little chocolate bar on my face now. So if I did apply <laughs> too much, what would you suggest I maybe need to blend? Do I just need to blend, blend, so blend? If you, well, if you, if you blend with the same brush that you put mm -hmm. it on with, then you're gonna get more product on your face. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation would be to get our flux sponge. Okay. Do you have a flux sponge there with you? I don't have a flux, I have it in the other room. I should have been better prepared. Okay, uh, you can get a flux sponge or you can get a clean brush. Okay. For example, your blending contouring brush. I do have that okay. right here. And then let's go back up and blend with that and just kind of go in an upward direction, pushing it out towards your hairline. Okay. Blend it right into the hair. And you can see as yeah. you go oh. over it and over it, see how that softens it? Ah, wow, I have cheekbones. <laughs> look, at that. look at the difference between that. Wow. So if you okay, look I and you can now. see where, where I contoured Taylor here under the cheekbone and along the jawline, one other place that we can put contour is in the temple here. Oh, and I like yes. to take it from the corner of the eyebrow up into the hairline this way. Oh, I so love that. So we're that. getting a little lifting effect there. That was a question we had was, how do I do anything above the cheekbone? Do I go on my forehead? So, so at the corner you said of the eyebrow and lift up? Yeah, now Taylor has perfectly proportioned face, so I don't need really to like does. contour yeah. away her <laughs> forehead. But if she had a larger forehead, I could go definitely up here on the sides. Mm -hmm. And I could go along the top of the forehead to contour it down that way. Really cool thing, when you buy the contour kits, mm -hmm. inside of them is a little key that has different facial shapes yes. and where to put the color. And I help to create those. So please, <gasps> if, you, if, you, if, you get, if you get it out of the box, don't throw it away. I want you to look yeah. at it for me. Exactly, you'll have to sign it next time you go into a location, <laughs> I think. So let's do the contouring on the other side. I'm gonna go down here under her cheekbone a little bit more again. And again, there's no color in this really, it's just solid depth. 
Oh, what? that's a great distinction. So it's, that was, I know we'll talk about this shortly, but uh, there were a few people curious about what's the difference between bronzer and contour. So I think that's a great kind of distinction yeah. right off the bat. <laughs> Absolutely. A contour color is typically just something you're using for shaping. Now, mm -hmm. with that said, it's important to remember that when you, when you contour, your for day-to-day -day wear, take a look in the mirror for me just so I can see you from this light. When you contour for day-to-day -day wear, very often you don't wanna do dark contouring. So right. your bronzer is a great alternative. If oh. you do your, your So Bronze 1 or your So Bronze 2 mm -hmm. as a day-to-day, as a -day, you can put that in the same places that you would put a contour and just blend it out. And so it does a dual task. Number one, it's shaping your cheekbones. And number two, it's putting a little sun-kissed color back into your skin. To choose that color, look at your arms. Okay. Look at your decollete or the shoulders where the sun mm -hmm. hits you when you wear something strapless. All those places where the sun hits you, that naturally deep color, try to match that with your bronzer. I, you have rendered me speechless. I, this is worth the price of admission, admission alone, that one tip. <laughs> I'll get a little bit of the highlight color, just a hint of it. And you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna highlight yet. We okay. will come back to that highlighter if we want to, but now that she has this beautiful contour on her face, I don't want to ruin it. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go in with some color now. Okay. We have the blush that's in there. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, someone asked a question about that. You said that was the shade sunset, correct? It's, it's closest relative would be the, with the, the shade sunset. And in the cool, would you say, is that closest to maybe awake or oh, barely, uh, rose. barely rose? Yes. Yeah. So I forget. And, who and in the that. warm kit is the closest mm -hmm. to a copper wind. Perfect. And uh, Laura, there are different contour palettes based on um, it's cool, warm, and neutral for the great shape? Yes. Cool, yeah. warm. No, not neutral. Cool, not warm, neutral. and deep. Cool, warm, and deep. I, I always get that one wrong. So I'm getting a little bit of that blush and I'm taking it out here onto the top of her cheekbones and into the temples. Now this is, might be, or it might be a big aha moment for a lot of you because mm -hmm. we're used to, everybody over the last decade has been seeing blush here, mm -hmm. down in the, in the apple of the cheek right there. And that's, you know, the Bobby Brown technique, bronzer around and then the, and then the blush in the apple. But over the last, year or two we've been seeing blush migrating from down here back up to here like we did in the 70s. I love it. And you know if you were you, you're too young to remember this Katie but back in the 70s um, <laughs> designer a fashion designer named Claude Montana did these fabulous runway shows mm -hmm. and had gorgeous collections of clothing and the model the models in his shows would do this rich bronzy blush and they would do it mm -hmm. up here and into the temple, and it would go like that kind of a shape, and they, they titled it the Claude Montana V, that's what it was called, and so that was, it was like this chic way to do blush, and then it became a trend across, across all the designers and in, in the makeup industry, and all over, you saw women with this kind of V of blush up here, and then in the 80s, when blushes started becoming bright fuchsia, women kept the technique, but they just changed colors, and so you'd see women with fuchsia going up there, and Thus, the, the term bronzer became a big play because women still wanted to be able to do that, but they didn't want to always do it with fuchsia. I have to say right now, I'm seeing people doing it even with brighter colors like pinks mm -hmm. and fuchsias, and I think it's actually quite pretty. I do as well. I love, It looks so editorial, but I see people in everyday life doing it, so I feel like I can too, right? It's, an, it's a nice revival of that style. And so I don't know is, if we mentioned it, but we're using the fan brush now to use the, uh, or you may have said it, to use the blush. I didn't, so thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the fan brush, and the reason I like the fan brush is it gives you control over mm -hmm. how much product you're putting. Yes. It really gives it, I'll give you one of these. It really gives you the ability to, you know, not put too much. And because the brush is very sheer, you can make more liberal strokes. You don't have to be so careful. Because yeah. I'll tell you now, if I got this dome brush mm -hmm. and I got the sunset and put it on there, I'd have a big pop of color. Right. So the, I get much more easily buildable color with this. Yes, I'm feeling just sort of like this nice, like I, I look very healthy and alive. 
<laughs> where unlike the start of this when I was just one sort of pale color <laughs> nice glow I like it that's yeah, very pretty, pretty. Yeah. yeah well thank you both <laughs> the other thing I was going to say the fan brush I feel it just feels so nice uh, it's just sort of like a nice light massage it's so very take. interesting because when I when every time I use that brush on customers in a retail location if I'm there doing a special event or something mm -hmm. Everybody buys it. And by the end of the day, they're always sold out of wide fan brushes because people love it. They just fall in love yeah. with it. It's an easy exactly. one to it's, use. Exactly. It's fun. It feels nice. And I like the, yeah, it's just sort of like a light sweep. Um, exactly. Now I want to, I want to break away from the contour kit. Okay. And I want right. to get another product that I think is just been a tremendous uh, launch for us. And, and it's, it's our glow time ethereals. These are, they're not just extraordinary because of the way that they look. They also have a fabulous ingredient deck. They're made with jojoba oil, which is really hydrating and soothing to the skin. Mm -hmm. They also have a lot of mica, which gives it that fire and makes them, you know, yes. give bright luminosity and intensity. And then there's some, uh, there's some Saracen wax is part of the formula. And the key to Saracen wax is it has a higher melting point than beeswax. So it keeps it from breaking as easily. It also keeps you from, from it melting off as easily as a lot of traditional uh, blushes do. And it's vegan, so people exactly. love that. Yes. Do we see a question? Uh, I'm just popping in here now. I never knew how to use the fan brush before. Yes, Tracy, now you know. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, <laughs> Jennifer says, I remember in cosmetology school learning when applying blush, if you take two fingers from the corner of your nose and apply blush from behind those two fingers away from the nose, then you won't have the dreaded looking clown cheeks. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's, not a, that's not a bad rule. And I've heard yeah. that too. But yeah. the problem is, is that some people have wider cheeks than others. Sure. If I go two fingers from her nose mm -hmm. here then I, I think that that would probably work quite well for Taylor. If you do two okay. fingers from the nose on me, I don't have very a wide face. And so mm -hmm. my blush will only be out here and there won't be oh, any sure. on the side. So yeah. um, the, I'm, I'm going to get the Glow Time Ethereals in the color Mist, which is a luminous pink. And this has a lot of shimmer and sparkle to it. Yes. And I'm just going to blend it right onto her cheeks there. And I'm putting it right in the outer corner of the eye. I don't know if you can see where I placed it. Oh yes, yeah, it's and picking right over the eye. And tap and blend, tap and blend. And should I do that too in the same place? Or do you think because of my different face shape, I should try something else? I think you actually could get away with it. Okay. I'm now mind go. you, I want you to do it with mist because it'll be okay, nice yes. and bold if you do it. Okay, so right here. Nope, get closer okay. to the eye. Get closer to the eye, okay. Yep, right there. Like there? Perfect. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Gorgeous. Now tap and blend. Oh, I love it. <gasps> so pretty. Oh, and we got a couple of other questions. I got distracted. I'm sorry, everyone. So uh, for foundation, I used Glow Time BB Cream tonight, and I used our blending contour. Uh, what did you use on uh, Taylor for Beyond Matte, Sean? For the Beyond Matte, I used M13. And with um, a brush or fingers? I use the blending contouring brush whenever I apply uh, the Beyond Matte. I just think it's a pretty, a, a nice brush to use and it gives a, an easy application that disperses the product out. There's a lot of bristles in the blending contouring brush. Mm -hmm. So because it's very dense, you get, an, you get a, 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 a nice rich blending. It's also the brush that I choose to use when I'm using liquid minerals. Now, I know there's a, probably a lot of liquid minerals customers out there. If you love liquid minerals, but you feel like it comes out too chunky, mm -hmm. remember that it's supposed to come out. It's supposed to come out looking like cottage cheese. It's not broken. Right. And you mash it down with the blending contouring brush. And then you just go in light in, in intense circles all over the face. And you'll get a beautiful blending of the product. It's true. Look I how pretty that looks on you, Katie. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to have to do that. Try this on the, on the regular. Um, let's see here. We got a couple more questions that popped in. Um, the palette we were just using was our Great Shape. I, great Shape uh, contour kit. I used Cool, which mm -hmm. is this nice little trio there. And I used Deep. And he used Deep on Taylor. What do you think? How do you like the way it looks? Oh, Taylor. You look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, uh, Laura just asked, are we possibly coming out with a cream bronzer? 
Um, so we actually already, if you think about the glow time materials, colors like Glorious and Aura, those are great cream bronzer, bronzers. Yes. Glorious has a deep, rich kind of a coppery bronze color. Look at how beautiful that is. And you can put that around the same area that you put and I and just the, the same area that you would put any normal bronzer and get the same result. And always, you just tap and blend. Now, if you want to use a glow time material, but you don't want to do it with your fingers, mm -hmm. I'll show you a little trick here. Let me just do this on me real quick. When you do it, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. When you do it on yourself, you can get the product and put it like that. You see where I just put it? Mm -hmm. And then you just go in with your dome brush and blend it out. I always, I must look so unattractive. I just am like so slack jawed every time I'm, I'm in one of these. Cause I, I it's, it's really, you see the magic of makeup. I, I think <laughs> in these moments. Um, that's how you can use glorious or aura mm -hmm. as a bronzer. Yes. Oh, and I had, uh, I have aura <laughs> to my side here. If anybody was curious yeah. what that looks like. And if you want to, if you want to put a little aura just under your cheekbone there, mm -hmm. where the, where the, where the, um, contour kit is, mm -hmm. You can definitely kind of put it in the same, a little higher. A little higher? A yep, little right higher. Here? Right right there, stop. Right okay. there. Perfect. Now go and, get, and grab your dome brush. Okay. And just blend in little circles. See the effect? Oh, I love it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Just a little, little bit more warmth there. Yeah. Love that. It's um, nice because it's intense. Yes, exactly. I like a little intensity. Um, so let's see here. Oh, uh, this was a question I had on my list for you. Um, Lori asks, how do I know if I need warm or cool contour kit? So we got a lot of questions about undertones and picking the right blush shade. So if you have any tips, love to So <clears throat> I'll tell you now, Jane and I have different philosophies on this. Jane and I, mm -hmm. I, I, I Jane has never outright disagreed with me on this. Mm -hmm. but Jane's philosophy is, if you have a pink undertone, you should wear a pink blush. Mm. If you have a warm undertone, you should have a, wear a warm blush. So if you look at your face and you have freckles and red hair, chances are copper wind would be good for you okay. or whisper would be good for you. If you have a light complexion with, uh, with blonde hair mm -hmm. and kind of pink skin, then you're probably gonna be better off doing barely rose or awake. Okay. My personal philosophy is if you have a lot of gold in your skin or warmth to your skin, mm -hmm. that you should do barely rose because if you do a copper wind or a warm color on, on warm skin, then it can make you look too warm, too jaundiced. Mm -hmm. I see. And if you have cool skin that's very pink and you put barely rose, that, that it could make you look too red. Mm -hmm. So I typically do warmer colors like barely rose or I, I'll do warmer colors like Copper Wind on cool skin. I love so that. So I recommend trying both and see which one feels the most comfortable to you. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that is important is don't go too dark with your blush. Okay. Remember that your bronzer is what you're shaping with your, fa your, your face with. Right. Your blush represents the hue of your skin, the tone of your skin. Hmm. So you want it to look a little bit more like what you would look like if you flushed or blushed yeah, naturally. It's a nice sort of cheat sheet. I like that. The hue of your skin. That's that's the a good hue one. of your skin. Yes. Um, so, so I want to go. I want to go back so in and just add a little bit more of the sunset. Perfect. Her. Because someone just asked if you could show your contour kit that you were using again. So. Oh, that's perfect. Yes, answered it before I even could. As I'm putting the sunset, you'll notice that it's mixing with the glow time ethereal that I put on her and you're seeing a nice blending. <gasps> oh my goodness. She's got a sunset on her face. <gasps> <laughs> How stunning. Taylor, yeah. do you normally wear um, makeup like this? Do you wear color? No, ma'am. I no? usually don't. <gasps> it's, I think you have to start now. I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking yeah. I'm going to agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor's studying to be a nurse, so hey, that's wonderful. She's going to need a routine that isn't too complicated that she can wear, you know, for day to day. I'm giving her a bag of goodies, so oh, she'll 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 be off to a good start. Look at how beautiful that is on you. Hold on, I want to go a oh, little bit goodness. more intense. Outer corner here. 
And I'm going to take it right up into the outer eye as well. I'm going to do that too. And again, this is kind of a, this is a, a very edgy look that we're seeing in fashion trends right now, taking that blush right up into the outer portion of the eyes. Now, oh, this is, unusual placement of blush is nothing new. Diana Vreeland, mm -hmm. the editor of Vogue back in the 60s, used to wear blush on her ears. There's a documentary and, and it talks about it. And I think it's really cool. It's called I know, I know The that. Eye Must Travel. So you should you should watch it. It's a, it's a really yes. great, lots of quotes for her. Um, Okay, so we have a couple questions I'll just kind of chat through here. Um, we did, so some of the ones that are coming in are on my list as well. So we did get a fair few questions about things like, uh, should I wear shimmers or glitters and creams on mature skin? We have some questions specifically about um, 50 plus or what colors are good for 60 year olds, so on and so forth. So the color for a 60 year old would be the same color that a 40 year old or a 20 year old could wear. Mm -hmm. The shimmer, <clears throat> if you have deep set wrinkles on the cheek and you feel like your cheeks have a lot of texture, mm -hmm. then you're gonna be better off with a more matte finish blush, okay. something that doesn't accentuate that texture. Remember that if a wrinkle or a bump reflects light, it becomes yeah. more visible. Yes. So if you wear matte color, it inhibits the ability to reflect light. So it, it by default, it's an optic illusion. It makes the skin look smoother. Perfect. So matte foundations, it's, it's interesting because a lot of women in their 60s and 70s, they'll say, I don't like to wear matte because I'm afraid it's going to bring up, bring out my wrinkles. And mm -hmm. the truth is, is the opposite is more true. If you, if you, if you make too much shimmer on the skin, sometimes mm -hmm. it, it brings out wrinkles. I now, see. with that said, I do think it's okay to have a, a kind of a dewy moist glow. So yeah. uh, cream blushes are good if they're not too shimmery. Um, but what I like to do for somebody that has some texture in the cheeks and they're wrinkly, I'll mm -hmm. use a matte blush like Copper Wind, Barely Rose, Awake, Mocha, one of those, and I'll dust it on lightly, and then I'll spritz with hydration spray. Oh. And that sets it to the skin and gives it back a little hydration yeah. to avoid it looking too dry or too, um, uh, uh, too textural. It help, helps to soften it as well. Perfect. Um, so kind of along these same lines, um, and one of my questions as well, what, what would you suggest for um, somebody who has hyperpigmentation, acne, rosacea? Where should we sit in this category for, for our cheeks? So for hyperpigmentation, <clears throat> we, make, we make some concealers that I think are quite extraordinary. There's one that we have that's called Enlighten, okay? And Enlighten is, is uh, the original Enlighten One concealer is great because it's very peachy, mm -hmm. makes the under eyes look fr fresh. But there's also another one called Enlighten Two. Hold on, let me see if I can find a tester of it here. Hold on, right, I've got one right over here in my kit. Enlighten Two is interesting because what it has in it is it has a deeper tone of peach Oh, there it is. So when you put it on, it neutralizes the appearance mm. of hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and discoloration, and it gives your cheeks color and makes them look fresh. Perfect. So it's kind of like a blush and a, and a, and a camouflage in one. Yes. So it's a great one to use for people that, that want to soften the appearance of hyperpigmentation without making their cheeks look, you know, too heavy. Because... The, the traditional method for covering things like hyperpigmentation and dark spots is to use more coverage. Right. And then people end up looking like they've got gobs of heavy makeup on. At Jane Iredale, our philosophy is to work smarter rather than harder. Mm -hmm. Rather than using more coverage, what we do is we use color that neutralizes the darkness. Orange, copper, colors like that will neutralize the darkness. If somebody's too red, we use a yellow foundation to neutralize the redness, things like that. Exactly. It's just, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's art. You're, you're painting and <laughs> getting there in the end. Um, okay, so we did get a couple other, other questions about um, color choice and uh, warm and cool tones. So I think what, Sean, what I may do is have you write up your philosophy and then we can send it out to people that were curious about that so they'll have it in writing. Um, be great. Rather than, yes, rather than going through that. Um, oh, uh, another great question about um, sort of pigmentation. What about vitiligo? 
vitiligo, now vitiligo, you can also use the Enlighten for that, mm -hmm. but the, the new Enlighten Plus concealer comes in a variety of tones from number two, which I used on her, all the way down to some deeper tones. For example, the Enlighten Three, you can see the color is much more intense. Oh yes, I see there. that. So colors, people that are losing the pigmentation in their skin can use the Enlighten uh, Plus and get and, and use a deeper color to get back the color that they want on the skin. Ah. That's, that's number three. And it goes as deep as number four. Is there a five? No, there's not a five, is there? Yeah, there's not a five. So the four, but the four is a really rich, deep color. So it's great for people with, with vit vitiligo, hypo pigmentation, vitiligo. Hypo, yes. Um, and Charlotte, this will be on uh, the Jane Iredale YouTube channel. You'll get an email with the link um, after we end our, uh, I was going to say our broadcast. We can say broadcast. <laughs> yes. After we end our broadcast today. I'm going to pull up my list of other questions, but um, I interrupted you during the process. I think we were... I forget where we were. Were we moving on to highlight or were we on bronzer? We were on we were on bronzer, but I wanted to go ahead and do some some uh, powder highlighter because some people want the option of they don't want to just do highlighters that are um, that are that are cream based. Some people want something with a little bit more luminosity to it. So this is our Rose Dawn is the one. And now this the striped bronzers come in a variety of tones. There's Moon Glow, Sunbeam, Peaches and Cream, Rose Dawn. Um, I believe Meghan Markle likes uh, likes to wear the Peaches yes. and Cream. But the Rose Dawn, it, it has well oh, good. You've got it right there. Peaches and Cream. When you wear the, when you wear these, you get a little bit more pinpointing of light exactly in the places that you want it to be. Yes. They're highly reflective. They're made primarily of mica. So I, if I go in and I'll get a clean, um, a clean white fan brush and I'm going to get just the bright pink color that's in there and I'm going to pop a little of that just on the top of her cheekbone here okay. to create some extra shine and luminosity there. Can you see how that kind of cuts the... Ooh, I jumped ahead. I did it on me too. <laughs> yeah, it's so beautiful. Oh, and you can you can get all the colors and kind of put them on there if you want to. But I like, I love the bright pink that's in there mm -hmm. is one of my favorites. The other way that you can use this product if you want to is you can just swirl your brush mm -hmm. and pick up all the colors that are in there. And then you have something kind of really fun to use. I'm going to be brave. <laughs> I'm doing it. I just love this brush so much. You like that? It's very pretty. Okay, I'll give you that. Oh, wow. Taylor, I need to put on sunglasses. It's, you're blinding me with the glow. <laughs> so, let me look at you Somebody, I lost the question. Someone asked what's on her lips, but she's wearing um, Forever Peach. I'm yeah, and the reason, the main reason that I did Forever Peach, because I didn't know whether you guys might want me to do a little bit of lips on her while we're on camera, because something I did not put on her is a gloss. And we haven't used the new um, Hydro Pure gloss on camera yet. So what, what color do you have there? I have Cosmo. I have Cosmo. <laughs> we're just so, so Do you like the color? <laughs> yeah, I do. So Cosmo, I thought would be, would be really pretty on you. This is made from a variety of essential oils. It's got um, jojoba oil, mango oil, um, vegetable oil. Uh, it's also got some avocado oil in it. So it's rich with moisture, but the thing that makes this one special is that it has hyaluronic acid, which plumps up the lips, mm -hmm. helps them to hold on to hydration. Palmatoil tripeptide. Try to say that. Palmatoil tripeptide. Palmatoil pi tripeptide. Tripeptide. Good enough. <laughs> so what that does is it, it's, it's, a, it's a peptide that increases collagen synthesis and plumps up the lips as well. And then there's even some lactic acid in there, which exfoliates the lips and makes them smoother. So if you wear it on a regular basis, it feels wonderful and it literally makes your lips smoother for regular use. It's true, I, especially now that you it's getting smoother. Where my lip brush go? Oh, there it is. <clears throat> I'm gonna get our retractable lip brush to put that on you with. And if you look at the, the finish of it, it's absolutely gorgeous, it's pearlescent. The other interesting thing about it is that it doesn't have a sticky consistency like a lot of traditional 
lip glosses do, it feels more like a lip balm than it does a lip gloss. So people love how fresh it is and how non-sticky it is. Exactly. Feel? Ooh. Like it better on me than I did on your in the tube. <laughs> Even better on, on you than yeah. it was in the container. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really beautiful on you. Do you want to? So, do we want to? Do we want to bump up her eyes with a little liquid liner before we go? Why not? And then I, I have a few more questions before we we go as well. But Let's, um, yeah, go ahead and shoot with the questions and let me know what people want to know. Perfect. Okay. So um, this is, I think it's related to this, but uh, somebody wanted to know how often one should clean their, their brushes. Oh, that's an important question. So yeah. if you're the only one using the brush and mm -hmm. you can get away with cleaning them once a week. Okay. Um, if you are a professional working in a Jane Iredale location, selling our product, then you have to clean it after every use. And you don't have to wash them with shampoo or cleanser mm -hmm. after every use, but we have a botanical brush cleaner Ugh. that not only does it clean them, but it sanitizes them and it smells wonderful. Very yes. often I'm, I'm doing That's makeup on people and they'll say, oh, I love the way the makeup smells. And I'm like, you're actually smelling the brush. The joke's on you. <laughs> Um, let's see here. And, and a question that came in a little bit earlier, I think I missed it, was how does one use the highlight shade in the Great Shape Kit? Ah, the highlight shade. The, did you see the way that I put on the, the, the brush rose. with the highlight color from the, uh, from the Rose Dawn? Yes. It's exactly the same kind of placement. What you're doing is you're getting the product. Hold on, let me just lay this down here for a second. Yes. You're getting the product. Let me grab that kit. And you're just picking it up and going back and forth on the top of the cheek with it and laying it at the highest point of where the top of the cheek is to create lift. Lovely. Now, when you do that, be conscious that if you put too much light anywhere, you can have a tendency to make the skin look a little over light. Mm. garish so be be mindful of how much light you're using balance it with a little bit of color a little bit of depth underneath the cheekbone so that you're just that not all idea. white i i feel like i've seen people out in the wild who are just sort of like a, a light bulb <laughs> they, need, they need to take a master class with sean very clearly <laughs> um let's see we've gotten over we've gone through most of our questions sort of organically and from my list um, but let's see here. We talked about glow time sticks on, on aging skin and, and that whole thing. Um, and I think you, perfect model choice tonight because there were some questions specifically on how to contour on deeper skin, olive skin tones. Uh, so I feel like a lot of what we see is just on, on complexions like mine. So I'm happy we have some skin tone diversity. Yeah, you know, we, we put a lot of energy into, and I was, I was telling Taylor this before we started, into creating deeper skin tones in our foundations that are rich and not ashy. Um, you know, for years we had a lot of different deeper foundation colors and we, we actually updated them, removing a lot of the titanium dioxide from them to take away that white ashy tone that was underneath and increasing the amount of things like iron oxides, which mm. make them look more pigmented and beautiful. So our, our new deeper foundations have been a tremendous success. Everybody's loving them. We're getting great reviews on them. And I have to say, I love the colors that they come in too. I think that there's so many wonderful colors. You know, very often a woman of color will have an area of depth around the outer portion of the face mm -hmm. and an area of light in the middle of the face. My job as a makeup artist isn't to make the darker area look lighter or the lighter area look darker, mm -hmm. but to create a smooth transition between the two yes. to give that beautiful glow that only a woman of color can have. So I think that it looks gorgeous. Do you like, do you feel like that yeah. this is natural enough that you would yeah. wear it outside? Yeah, of course. Okay. Oh, and uh, everybody, there's a lot of love for Taylor going around. So <laughs> gotta go out tonight or do something. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, I told her I have to use her again at some point for my smoky eye model, because I would Ooh, love to answer to do a smoky eye sometime. That would be stunning. Um, let's see here, getting a couple more questions in here. Um, oh, Sean, were you using uh, Mystical? I was using Mystical. I used the Onyx and the Mystical. Okay. And now I'm just going in with a little bit of our new Beyond Lash Mascara 
in the black ink Somewhere and putting that well. open, look straight ahead. My desert island pick. Yeah, I have to tell you this mascara, I can't believe the performance of it and how well it's done. It's the it, it's so much more fluid than than any of our other mascaras we've ever made mm -hmm. before, but it's doing it without being drippy or gross and it dries perfectly. And I also love the fact that it's so inky and dark. Exactly. It's a really rich, intense formula. Exactly. Um, so we're getting a lot of questions about um, foundation and complexion. So please do stay tuned. We're planning more content around that specifically. So you will get your answers on those. Um, let's see here. Deborah asked, how do you know whether to use the highlighter in the kit or the other palette you used? Ah, so it, it's really just a matter of taste. The highlighter that's in the kit is typically a more neutral highlighter. Uh, the one in the deep kit has a little bit of gold in it. The one in both the warm and the cool kits are very neutral. They're flesh tone, in other words. The highlighters that are in our quad bronzers or our striped bronzers are not. They have color to them. They come in warm, cool, neutral. They come in pinks, bronzy tones, a variety of different tones. So one is gonna be much more pearlescent and bright in color and kind of iridescent and give undertone while the other will just be kind of a subtle natural looking highlight, especially the warm and the cool have less shimmer to them as well. Um, the deep has a little bit more luminosity in the highlighter. Perfect, love that answer. Let's see here. Um, Sean, would you mind showing your Beyond Lash tube? Someone wanted to see the- Oh uh, yeah, yes. if you haven't seen it, and this is this evokes all of our new packaging as well. Yes. So across the board, Jane Iredale is going through a, a beautiful brand update and all of our packaging is this elegant powder white mm -hmm. with these soft gold lids. And, and notice the wand as well. The wand has an hourglass shape to it. So it cradles the lashes when you put it on you don't have to kind of go and angle it back and forth like you, like a lot of them. You can just go straight on and it gets the corner lashes just as well as the middle lashes. So it's kind of nice that way. I like that it cradles your lashes. That, that feels so charming to me, I, I feel like. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Carol says she's, she'd love to see a smoky eye demonstration. Well, Carol, we'll have to get something on the books with, uh, with Taylor and Sean, so. Uh, let's see, I think I got all of the questions from my list. Um, okay. We talked about carving cheeks and face and sculpting. Uh, we talked through rosacea and all that good stuff, all that good stuff. Are there any other questions before we head out for the evening? Sean, any other uh, hot tips? So <laughs> the only other, la the last thing I'll just tell you all is that if you want to pick a new blush color, Mm -hmm. I, I invite you to go, you know, go, go onto janeirondale.com, find a retail location next to you or close to you. Just put in your zip code into the geolocator. It'll show you where the closest location to you is. Uh, we have on our beauty gallery, which is our tester unit, all of the blushes laid out. There's always professionals in our locations that'll teach you kind of which different colors are out there to choose. But don't just pick, don't just pick something that you are familiar with go yes. a little bit deeper or a little bit lighter than what you're used to. And don't be afraid to pull your placement from the apple up onto the outer corner and even into the temple right now. It's a fun trend and I think you'll enjoy it. And as always, if you use Jane Iredell products, I think you'll love the way that they make your skin feel and look. It's a great brand, it's still as clean as it's ever been. And we have an incredible pipeline of new products that are constantly coming out that we can't wait to show you. Oh, we sure do. Okay, our last few questions here before we, before we are done. Um, let's see here, let's see, let's see. Um, oh, about the iron oxide and titanium dioxide. And uh, there was a question if that was the natural sunscreen in the so, foundation. Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are natural sunscreens. So they are, they, and they're, they're registered as physical sun protection. So it's one of the few ingredients that can be legally used as a physical sun protection. And <clears throat> our products are endorsed by the Skin Cancer Foundation. So, and we're not allowed to just, you know, we can't just pay them and say, hey, here's $50,000, please put your seal on our products. 
we have to test them in an FDA certified laboratory to prove that they give the kind of protection that we want. So um, our, our sun protection is physical, not chemical. Um, that's also important because it's reef safe. And in this day and age, when our, our, our coral reefs are dying around the world from the use of chemical sun protection, it's really great that we can use something physical instead of chemical. And it's also very water resistant, up to 40 minutes under moving water. Um, and yes, we test that also in FDA certified laboratories. So. Yes. Wonderful. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, if we didn't get to your question, please shoot us a note. I shared Sean's uh, Instagram as well, and you can find us at Jane Iredale on Instagram and Facebook. Um, this replay will be on our YouTube very soon, and uh, we can't wait to see you again. Thank you, Sean and Taylor. And Tyler, uh -huh. smile for everybody in the camera. Thank you so much for joining oh, no us problem. today. It was an absolute joy. Y'all have a yeah. great day. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sean. Good to see you. Take care. Bye, everyone.